EP1100, Data Communication and Computer Networks. Some illustrations in this material are collected from the book by Forreston, Data Communications and Networking, published by McGraw-Hill. Given a transmission medium, we would like to know what is the ultimate data rate that we can use the medium for. This ultimate rate is often referred to as the transmission capacity of the medium. In order to come to a, an expression to compute the transmission capacity, we have to first look at what happens to the signal as it propagates through a medium. The first transmission quality we consider is called attenuation. It's a dampening. It means that you send a signal into a medium, but the signal will lose energy in the medium. No link is perfect, and we can look at the ratio of the input power to the output power. This is often expressed in decibels, so you see here the expression. We take the logarithm of the ratio of the input and output powers and you multiply it by, by 10. For example, if you have input power of 120 milliwatts and now you receive out 30 milliwatts, then you have an attenuation of roughly 6 dB. When we talk about power and sensitivity attenuation, we of, it's often very convenient to count in decibels. For instance, by halving the power of a signal, it means that it has lost 3 dB in its strength. We can also represent power levels in relation to, to a reference power level. So that 0 dB means that the power is the same as the reference level. You can see that because P in, P out, that ratio is 1, and logarithm of 1 is 0. This is used for transmit the output power and receive input sensitivity. So we measure it in decibel watt or in decibel milliwatt. That means that we have a, either a reference value of 1 watt or of 1 milliwatt, as the expressions show here. It's only used for convenience. If we have a sender power expressed in, say, uh, dBm, then we can subtract off the attenuation in decibel from that power, and then we will get the receiver power. Transmission quality is affected also by something we call distortion. If you look at the composite signal as sent in, such as, as a signal that is created to represent data, then you can look at it as different tones that are superimposed on one another. These different frequencies, these different tones, propagate with different speeds for the medium. So when they get at the receiver, they get superimposed or summed up in a different way than they were generated at the sender, and this is the distortion. The result is that the signal changes form or shape as it propagates with the medium. We also have that the attenuation might be frequency dependent, so that certain frequencies are dampened much more than others. We talk about the low pass, if the higher frequencies are attenuated more than low ones, and we talk about the high pass if the lower frequencies are attenuated more than the high frequencies. Or band pass if there is attenuation in the, in the lower and the higher region, but there is a span between these two regions where the transmission can propagate with little attenuation. Transmission quality is affected by the attenuation, by the distortion, but there is also noise added to the signal. This illustrates here that this is a waveform transmitted from point one, and then there's some noise generated from the outside that's added to the signal so that the received signal looks different than what has been sent. Noise is an undesired signal that's added to a transmitted signal. The most common form is what we call thermal noise. This is due to the random motion of electrons in the medium. of the signal frequency and amplitude and can be considered to be added to the signal. We call the noise white if it contains all frequencies with equal power. The signal-to-noise ratio, SNR, is the ratio between the signal that we send into the medium over the noise power that is added in the medium. This ratio is often also measured in decibel. So what can you do to handle these signal degradations? You can compensate for attenuation by amplification, but it amplifies both the added noise as well as the signal. The amplifier is not perfect also and could add its own noise. You could put a receiver that receives the signal, generates back the data that was carried by the signal, and then generate a new signal with the data going out. This is called regeneration. 
and this cleans off any noise that have been added to the signal. But the receiver may make additional errors, and these errors are of course propagated over in the outgoing uh, medium. We can have noise filters that filter out unused parts of the channel bandwidth that's not used for the actual transmission. And we can protect against distortion by equalizing the signals as being received, meaning that we could separate the signal, the composite signal, into its different sub frequencies and then adjust them time and amplitude wise and put them together again so that we compensate for, for the different propagation speeds that the different frequencies had and the different attenuations that the different frequencies had in the medium. There's also other disturbances such as crosstalk which means that signals that are pulled along with one another, for instance the unshielded twisted pair cables, signals in the pairs may leak out and inducing a signal in another pair. This is protected against by shielding the cables and reducing the leakage. The transmission capacity is the ability of a medium to transmit data. It relates to the bandwidth of the medium, so which is the distance between the highest and lowest frequency of signals that may be transmitted through the medium, often with an uh, attenuation of at most 3 dB. This bandwidth limits the channel's ability to carry data. If we increase the bandwidth of the medium, or we choose another medium which has a higher bandwidth than another, then we can also get a higher capacity. If there weren't for the noise, we would have an infinite capacity of a medium. So the noise is the main limiter of the capacity. We need to introduce some terms. The bitrate, already mentioned, this is the number of bits that can be transmitted by a medium per second. The baud rate is the number of signal elements per second, since we s the signal elements are the waveforms that represent the data. So if we have two signal elements, such as a high or a low amplitude, then we can represent each element with one bit. The more signal elements we have, the less different they will be. And thus, at the receiver, it will be easier with more signal elements to misinterpret the signal and make a mistake than if you have fewer elements which are more distinct from one another. The name board comes from a, a French researcher, Emile Bordeaux. There's a simple expression for capacity that says if you have a baud rate of R symbols per second and you have L symbols, then you take second logarithm of uh, L and multiply it by a baud rate and you get the capacity. The Nyquist bit rate, C max here, is the maximum bit rate on an ideal channel. So the baud rate is limited to, to B, but L is not limited at all if you have a noiseless channel. Because if there is no noise, then you could have L going to infinity. The receiver will still be able to distinguish the signal elements from one another, and therefore you can increase the capacity by having just a larger set of signal elements. But in reality, the noise will make signals dis indistinguishable from one another, and therefore uh, there is a limit to this capacity. This limit was formulated by Claude Shannon. Uh, he's often referred to as the father of information theory. So you see here that you have an expression that is not very different from the Nyquist-Hartley law. If the capacity is equal to the bandwidth, not twice the bandwidth, the bandwidth is here, times the second logarithm of an expression which is 1 plus the signal to noise ratio. And here the signal-to-noise ratio is the actual ratio between the two powers, not the logarithm, not expressed in dB. This is the highest capacity that you can get with the channel if you have white noise on the channel, added white noise. Let's take an example. It might be silly. We take the human ear. We have an auditory bandwidth of roughly 20 kilohertz. Uh, the ear can have a dynamic range of 130 dB, where a signal at 130 dB is the pain level of our ears. So the question is, what is the noise levels that we have around us? A conversation is around 60 dB, traffic noise is around 70, maybe up to 85 dB, of course it can get higher. 
So we try to estimate the signal to noise ratio for say music that we listen to. So we have a signal of 90 dB. The background noise is traffic of 70 dB. That means that we have 20 dB of signal to noise ratio. That corresponds to 100 times. And that means that the capacity with the signal to noise ratio will correspond to 133 kilobits per second, which is basically what you can get with an MP3 transmission.